Are you ready to get the hydrofacial glow? Loved in 87 countries across the world. It's not a facial, it's a hydrofacial. Now available across the UK. Visit hydrofacial.co.uk to find your nearest location. First of all, I, I have to confess, I don't know whether you knew, but I was absolutely, had the hugest crush on you. Oh. Hi guys, happy Hi. day. What news? Come on, let's spill oh, the beans. We have what we have the news, don't we? Happy days are here again. Why, Harriet? Why are we happy? Hashtag nominated. Uh, hashtag shortlisted. <laughs> Tag will win it. <laughs> so we have been nominated for the best Harriet? Original. Do Web. You? Oh, channel. Yay! Yay! By Broadcast Magazine, and that's terribly posh for us, isn't it? It's very that's impressive, it. darling. Very impressive. Very yeah. impressive. I mean, we, we're even impressed ourselves. Well, it was only a matter <laughs> of time. It was a matter of time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course. <laughs> and we've had so much fun doing this it's show. It's July, isn't it? It's July the 5th. It is. It is July the 5th. So, you know, we're up against some incredible people. So we, we are very honoured to be there and we've been shortlisted. So absolutely, somebody, somebody there has been watching Wonder Birds and somebody's been having some fun. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> and talking about fun, we have got the most incredible, wonderful guest today. He's a very good friend of mine. Um, I've known him for many, many moons. And um, I think perhaps other people may know him as well. But all will be revealed. Neil Dixon. Yay! Hi there. Neil! Well, hello. 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 darling. Lady, friend. Hello. Good How morning. are you, darling? <laughs> well, I'm I'm very good, actually. Very good. Yes, thank you. And how are all of you? Hey, listen, it's Jubilee Week, isn't it? It certainly is. It is. It is. Are you, you celebrating know. it in LA? Well, uh, yes, in a in a sort of roundabout way, but um, I, you know there aren't massive street parties, but um, we will be no. having our own celebrations. Your own celebration! Oh, how fabulous! Well, Neil, the last time I saw you, um, and the time before, we were in tights and leotards and what? wrestling. <laughs> Should we be hearing this, dear? Should we? But not well, together, well, not at the same time. Well, <laughs> it was a. Uh, memorable it's etched in my mind <laughs> have you yeah. had enough therapy darling to sort it out <laughs> <laughs> it cost a lot but yes I thought, yeah yes that we allowed to say how long ago that was <laughs> yes um, <no. laughs> oh yes go on everything's out there these days on the internet yeah, yeah no it was in 1982 83 yes and we were doing a play called Clafford Tansy at the Mermaid Theatre we did it for about six months, I think, didn't we? We did. We did. Uh, it, it was it was a fabulous play, uh, a, a, a play all about a rest. Well, about a it was a feminist play, really, about a um, a girl who's beaten up all her life by her parents, uh, her boyfriends, and then she decides to take up wrestling mm -hmm. because her boyfriend is a wrestler, and uh, she becomes this uber wrestling champion. And uh, Dee marvelously played Platinum Sue. And, <laughs> yes, uh, who was, who was not friend. a feminist. <laughs> no, she wasn't. She wasn't. She was the the, the best friend of the the main girl, Tansy. Yeah. And I was Dean Rebel, this uh, you know sort of outrageous um, chauvinist, chauvinist wrestler. Um, but it was very good because we sang and we danced and we. Every every scene was around within the play, so it was um, it was quite innovatory, really, at the time. Yes, and you looked very sexy in your lovely outfit, darling. Do you remember? I mean, I, I, I've I got do. photographs of it actually. I think you have too, don't you? Yeah, yeah. I've got some. Uh, uh, I had some drawings. I was so in love with myself at the time. <laughs> <laughs> I got this guy, this guy came to see the play and he was enamored by it. And I, 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 he was an artist. And I said, well, listen, the photograph fades with time. <laughs> a picture, a, a painting doesn't. So he came and he, he actually did drawings of the play. And um, uh, yes, I have those. I bought those at great expense at the time. <laughs> <laughs> 
but it was Guernsey. Good. Happy memory, they haven't faded. So. I know, and everyone had a real, you know, crush on you, Neil. <sighs> and, yeah, they... and, talking, and talking about crushes, Neil, Yes. I think you know somebody in our nest, I as do. well as moi. Yes, I do, and I'm going to blush now. And I wonder if she's... <laughs> Sherry. Yes. I've got... Well, a... They're both blushing. What's going on? Now yes, first, what is going on? Well, we leave now? We leave I, I, I've got a... village called Burton Joyce in Nottinghamshire. Yeah. And we actually live next door to each other. Yeah. And I used to play in Neil's barn, and that's not a euphemism. It's just a <laughs> double check about that. I was a little concerned. We used to play in our garden, and we used to play together. And we, we, I mean, we were children together. And then Neil suddenly disappeared. You, you disappeared. Well, you... did I disappear before you? Yeah, you did, darling, you did. I'll tell you what happened. I'll tell you what happened. First of all, I, I have to confess, I don't know whether you knew, but I was absolutely, had the hugest crush on you. Oh. This, this little <laughs> spotty kid who, um, you were a member of the Burton Joyce Players, weren't you? I was. <laughs> and the, the, the only reason I joined the Burton Joyce Players was, was to be it, within your orbit, let us say. <laughs> And I, so I joined the Burton Joyce Players and we, I used to meet the, there, we all used to meet there. And it's arguably, it's, it's the reason I became an actor. It's, maybe it was all your fault wow. that I became an actor. So I could, anyway, I, I, Burton Joyce Players. And then I just remember, etched in my mind forever, is the memory of walking you home one night from the Burton Joyce Players. <laughs> and we got to the, your driveway and uh, you started to go in. I said, well, I, I, I've got to take you to the front door. So I walked you up to the front door, heart thumping. <laughs> and we got there and then I just kind of put my hand on your shoulder. I just remember that I was so nervous uh -huh. and you were so gracious and kind and you gave me the most fantastic snog. <laughs> <laughs> it was... I mean, I didn't wash my face for a month. <laughs> so, you know, we had that. And then what happened? You just disappeared. I think you went off to RADA. You went off to RADA. I went to RADA, yeah. Because I, I went very young to RADA. I remember that. Because I think um, I went in RADA at 17. Wow. Oh. And that was very young in those days. Yeah. And you went to Guildhall, didn't you? I went to Guildhall, yeah. 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 Later, uh, there was one memory. I listen. I have this great memory of your brother, oh. your friend, brother Brett. He, this guy, was the most. Han we're all the boys were jealous because he was older, and he was the most handsome man, and a swath of blonde hair, and he was a DJ. And of course, we all wanted to be a DJ. And you know, <laughs> so what happened was that uh, he was didn't wasn't it a club? Was it the eight to late? The, That's the, right. the, yeah. He was the, the resident DJ. He became a legend and he went off to Manchester, I remember, to the Millionaires Club and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, to Pete Stringfellow. Yes, yes. Yeah. Early days of Pete Stringfellow. Yeah, very early days. He was a, a legend. I mean, uh, but you, I was having a party. We were having a party. Parents had gone away. We were having one of those pub turns <laughs> out. Everybody comes to the house. And it was a Saturday night and... Um, I, you know, it was great. I had a gramophone, but I didn't have any records. In fact, I had one record. <laughs> one record. record. Yes. It was by the Supremes. I always remember it. It was called The Happening. Yes. And you then said, you said, well, I'll bring some of Brett's 45s. <laughs> the... Ooh. I said, okay, great, fantastic. And what happened was that you didn't show up. You obviously found somebody else to ah! walk home at the Burton Joyce Players or whatever. And uh, I had this one record and all night I kept playing this one. <laughs> I, I, I was so drunk, I, I turned the record over and it was the same record. And I kept thinking, what? I turned the record over, what's happened? And it was the instrument, the B-side was an instrumental version. Of the Hysterical. But anyway, Sherry, you know, unrequited, oh, darling, unrequited love. Oh, Neil, it's good, good memories. And Brett, sadly, who oh. has gone now, um, 
he was the most beautiful man in the world. You're absolutely right. He was. And we have all those memories, don't we? And that's just fantastic. So yeah. good to see you. So good to see you. I can't tell you. Ah, oh, bless your heart. Brings back such love of that time. It's so moving to hear that, you know, again, especially your early days and and putting your hand on her shoulder, because we've all been there oh, and done the so moving. I never put my hand on Sherry's shoulder. What? I mean, you, she was a goddess. You have to understand. Uh, of course, of course. And still is, darling. And still, still is. is. But yeah. it was just, I mean, <laughs> you know, I got to snog her. You know? <laughs> It was just fantastic. And I was a spotty, smelly feeted little boy. <laughs> but, but again, it's just so blissful to hear it. It's just so fantastic and so wonderful. I want to ask you, the shift you made from theatre, film and television and things here, going to LA, that whole world, because I went there when I was eight in the 60s with my mum and we were there for years. Um, but what is it like? Because it's a very different place now. And making that jump from England to LA to work, what was that like? And you you live there now, don't you? Yes, li live here now. Yeah. I go yeah. back and forth, but yeah, based here. Well, it, it, in a kind of, I'd been going out quite a bit before in the 80s. I, I came yeah. out with some uh, spells in Dynasty and um, yes. mini series and stuff like that. But when we actually, I always said I'd never live in LA, you know, it's a great, <laughs> place, a great place to leave. But then I got the part, a part in this uh, series uh, called She Wolf of London. And it was one of the American gig, American job, but we were shooting it in, in Bristol and Bath. <laughs> and American Girl and myself, the two main characters. And I thought, well, this is brilliant. I mean, I'm getting that American gig and I don't have to go and live there. And then the producers decided to bring the storyline home to LA. So they moved my character and the girl in the story to LA. So mm. it was kind of cushioned by the fact that we were given, uh, I was given a, a certain amount of money to move here mm. and rent a house and all that. So it wasn't like, I, I know some actors who've come here and they just, they come cold. Mm. And it's Very uh, tough. a terrible <laughs> thing, but it's still a shock because, in a way, you, it's just getting into the whole system of being in America. Do you, you know, feel it's home? Does it feel home-like now? It does. It does. Mm -hmm. It was my kids have grown up here. I mean, of they course. were born in England, but they were four and six when we moved here. And uh, it does feel like home, but it's still still strange when uh, we, we a supermarket checkout, when somebody doesn't quite understand. And I, I sort <laughs> of make this silly. I apologise for my... A foreign accent I say you know and but it's, it's like I, I remember uh, we were in a restaurant um I actually said before I moved here in, in a restaurant and I said uh oh, she said is there anything you want the wait waitress and I said yes um I'd love a, a glass of water and she said uh oh, sorry sir we, we we don't have any of that said, <laughs> water and she said no no and I went Ah, I said, okay, I'll change it. I'll have a glass, you know, a, a glass of water, 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 please. There you go. Oh, we have that, you know. I mean, it was just, <laughs> I mean, it's it's very interesting. And American agents were just very different from English agents, mm. you know. It, it was much more business and not so much, you know, of the lovely, yeah, chat. And mm. I remember doing a play with Nick Ball. Do you remember Nicholas Ball? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nicholas Ball and I did The Dumb Waiter and uh, uh, not long after I'd arrived and he was out here and Mel Smith was in town and so Mel uh, said he'd direct it and um, you know I was trying to get my agent to come and see the show it was really good I think yeah and uh, you just couldn't get them to come and see the show they different world it's a different world well, yeah. is there anything you miss like marmite branston pickle i mean i know you can get all those things or a bit of cabris is there something that you miss that you don't have at your fingertips um there used to be all those things you know tea you know yes you know of course uh, thanks cup to of yeah, cabbage. You can get everything now via Amazon. Uh, but and and uh, I I think to begin with I miss the football. Hey, Nottingham Forest. Yeah. <laughs> Forest. Wow. Yeah. Into oh the Premiership. God. Nottingham Forest are now in the Premiership. Nottingham Forest, you know Neil Gary Burkles. 
Gary Birtles. Yeah, he was the striker, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I miss the football, yeah. And friends, you know, mm. just that thing. People didn't, people never just popped in here. They, yes. you know, they suddenly arrived for a cup of tea. No, you, yes. Uh, negotiate things. <laughs> yeah, community. And as you say, next door neighbours that you can snog occasionally. It's a different thing. Yeah. <laughs> And yes, yes, so I, I haven't snogged you, but you are gorgeous. You are very snoggable still. We have got security, don't <laughs> worry. Uh, we will sort that well, out. I, I am the regular sex Not in the nest. <laughs> <laughs> Danielle, tell us about your new movie. Right, it's called The Quantum Devil. Um, I shot it uh, last year in Belgrade. Fabulous, wow. you know, we all come out of that, the, the, um, the pandemic. And or so, so it seemed. And um, I was asked to go to Belgrade. And Belgrade at that point last year was the most vaccinated uh, city in the whole of Europe per capita. And um, so to go there, you felt this freedom of just being able to sit in a town square, in a city square, having a, a, a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, a beer, and watching the world go by. This is on my days off. And watch people snogging at the fountain, you know. <laughs> The so yeah, it, and and basically, it's um, it's a sci-fi horror um, uh, psychological uh, sort of thriller, directed by a, a great guy called Larry Wade Carell. Um, it uh, basically, I play this mad scientist who's been banned from everywhere. And he invites um, four very attractive young scientists, um, two, two guys and two girls, uh, to come and help him research into the breaching the quantum barrier. In fact, he's evil and he's gonna use them in his experiments. And um, it's a real Bond type villain mm -hmm. character. And, um, and I, you know, I, I can't say too much about it, but it, it, it jumps through genres. At one point it, it flashes back uh, to uh, a Stanley Kubrick, um, Barry Lyndon, Adventures of Barry Lyndon type jewel. So it becomes <laughs> sort of period, almost spoof of a, of, a, of a period film and then darts back and, uh, no, it's, it, I, I, I saw a bit of the footage and uh, it's good. So now after this, after making this movie, darling, what happens next? What are you doing next? Um, sign on. No. Um, <laughs> Get in um, the queue. Yeah, I, yes, I, what I do, I do audio books. Um, I'm, in fact, this film will have two sequels. So it's a, it's a little three picture deal. Oh, um, which is nice. You know, on the other hand, I, that film I did years ago, Biggles, that was a three picture deal. And it got as far as one picture. <laughs> then it kind of faded into, um, into nothing. But um, yeah, so it's, we're meant to be doing three pictures. <laughs> I think the next one's called The Voice and the third one is called Dragon Island. So the character goes on causing more evil. So there's that, there's mm. audio books, there's uh, the, everything. We're in a kind of limbo period because uh, you might know, you know, uh, from your parents, Harriet, of this thing called pilot season they have here. Yes. Oh, yeah. And, um, <laughs> pilot season mm. seems to have come to an end. Um, some seasons you're very aware of it. And others, not so much. But this, uh, so that I, I, there wasn't a pilot that I was part of this year. But um, there's always stuff. The thing is here, I mean, I can do, I do voiceovers, cartoons. Um, oh. there's, there's that you can keep busy all the time here. Well, not all the mm. time, pretty much a lot of the time. So it's, uh, it, it, it's good like that, you know. It's a lovely, a lovely place. I did I did a pilot out there. I was taken out there in 1985 um, wow. for a pilot called Rowdies, and uh, and then I was on option, you know, for six months, and I just had to hang around, which was kind of weird, uh, and meet <laughs> lots of strange people, and then they never picked it up, and that was the end of that. Yeah. And goodbye rude. and go home. <laughs> yeah. rude. But still come back, darling. You never know. Yes, exactly. exactly. <laughs> who is who wrote it? I'm getting on to them now. Uh, <laughs> They're probably dead by now. Yeah. <laughs> Happy days. I remember when I first came here, I, I, I was with the, uh, ICM, that agency uh, at the time, and uh, they, I was ushered into a room and all these people 
one came in to meet me. I mean, something like 25 agents from all the floors of this whole big building. And they all looked at me and cased me. And then they said, um, what do you want, Neil? What do you want? What are you looking for here? I said, well, work. And they said, yeah, but what sort of work do you want to do? And it was all this talk of things are going to happen. Things are going this is going to happen, that's going to happen. And they all left. I never saw any of them again. <laughs> <laughs> that says everything yeah, yeah it really you know, it, it does but you know we've made fantastic friends here yeah. we have some great great friends and it's 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 home you know although yeah. that said when the plane lands in england and i look out and i get into i start i see you know the i see people waiting in line to see we, for their loved ones i know i'm home when i'm Aww back in England. It's well, we'll be there waiting for you next time. The Wonder Birds. Yes. 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 Sherry might be one day. Yeah. <laughs> so. I'll make Burton sure she is. Bird and Joyce Neil hasn't changed at all. You know, I mean, our family went through such ups and downs in Nottingham during those years that, uh, you know, it, it's uh, the whole place is very firmly etched on my mind. My mum used to work at, went off to work. We we lost everything. We lost all the money. I don't know how evident it was uh, at the time, but my mum went to work at Hoveringham Gravels. Hey, didn't your mum live at the West Bridgeford Hotel at some point? She did at the top. <laughs> yeah. In the penthouse. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a good glamorous. Yeah, again, that was so glamorous. My mother was very glamorous. We had horses, we had stables in our home. <laughs> and I used to ride the horse, remember, Neil, to the corner yep. shop. Yes. <laughs> corner shop. I mean, my mother was very glamorous. And she, yeah, she, when we left Burton Joyce, she got this penthouse uh, suite at the top of the, <laughs> the hotel. I mean, it's extraordinary now when I think back of what she was like. She was an extraordinary woman, I have to say. To be that woman, you had you had to have. I mean, she was there was so much about her because she was a ballroom dancer. She was a she could literally do anything, and she did. <laughs> I have to tell you, <laughs> and she was very glamorous too, wasn't she? Very, I mean, very yeah. glamorous. Yeah. Yes, very glamorous, and all the, all the cars and everything. Yeah. You were, remember, we had a big American white, red and white, what was it called? I forget what those car, cars are called now, American car with big wings. Uh, of, I, um, yeah, I yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know the one you mean. Yeah. yeah. Yes. A, a uh, Cadillac, but anyway. Cadillac. It's a bunch times Cadillac. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sit there and. Uh, was... So exciting. I had no idea we were going to have an A to Z. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's just thank you so much. Yeah, sorry, we've got. Can I, <laughs> can I say congratulations on the nomination? You oh, guys, thank you. Thank you so much, Neil. Yeah, it's it's very That's kind, very kind, darling. Sherry, when I'm over, when you're over here, Neil. Yeah, I will. I'll be in and, touch and come on again. I'd love to. I'd love to. <laughs> and it'd be great because it'd be a nice time of day, you know. Yes. Yes, for you. Yes, it would be yeah. lovely. Exactly. <laughs> Not in the of so, Neil, will you please announce before you leave us your movie? Yes, the movie is. It is called The Quantum Devil. Um, You're saying? My name, my name <laughs> is, sorry, my name is Neil Dixon. No, we know that. <laughs> we <laughs> And you're playing <laughs> what character, darling? You're about to watch the Quantum Devil, um, with, and I'm playing Dr. Richard Cernovich. Brother, what an entrance! Six Semper Tyrannis. Enough of this useless band. <laughs> Let's get down to it, shall we, old chap? Ooh. It's lovely to see you. Lovely to see you, darling. Thank you for staying up all night to see us. <laughs> no, no, no. I do it Thank anytime. You. Anytime. Thank you. Thank you, lovely. darling. Please Thank come back and see us soon. I will. Lots of love to you all. And to you. Thank you. Love Bye. you. What an amazing um, man. And Sherry, we've heard a lot about you, darling, now. Mm. Yes, oh, Sherry. Your secret house. Snogging, snogging. A lot of parties. I know. Oh. And you didn't turn up with the record, Sherry. Yes. Can you not remember that night, Sherry? Yeah, I think I, I know the boy. <laughs> <I'm talking about. laughs> yeah, 
same same with school. That's a whole other show, sweetheart. We've got Absolutely. so much to go That's on now. Time he's back. But I've got a thinking, whole series on Sherry there must, the there must have been a TV show where people go back and talk about the houses that they lived in. Is that has <laughs> there been a magazine cover at that house? Mm. And uh, and the sad thing is, of course, the people in it had changed the house, but Neil's house was next door, and it was oh, it, they both are beautiful houses, and we were very lucky to grow up like uh, in these houses. And we, I look back now. When I went back, I thought, oh my god, I lived. In, <laughs> this is from my childhood. You know, we had a swimming pool in the back garden, which you know, in nineteen fifties, that wow. you didn't make yeah. It. Major, major. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, just, I, just, I, had, I had a, where I lived, I had a netty in the garden, which is those of you who understand <laughs> that, there's a toilet <laughs> and a backyard. Well, there you go. I yes. had a blow up swimming pool and a bit of paving stone. Yeah. yeah. We didn't even but, have a swimming pool in the summer. Yeah. We didn't even have a paddling pool. It was no point. No. It was never, hot, never warm enough. No. Oh. Well, my mum used to say to me, you know that Neil Dixon, do you know he's Biggles? And yes. I said, Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> said, Sherry, he is. He's gone in to do a film and he's Biggles. And I never believed her. There you go. <laughs> there you go. I know. So, he, he talked that down, didn't he? But he, 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 was, he actually played he Biggles. Big. Was and he big. was brilliant in it. I mean, he didn't even talk about that. But no. I, I went to the, the, the viewing of that actually at Pinewood with Johnny Huff, the director. And it was so, he was so good. He was brilliant. Well, there's a, there's a, there's a channel on our, on our television called Talking Pictures. Mm. And that film was on two nights ago. Oh, we, wow. we, we had on our show last year, the lovely actress, Patricia Brake, who's been a friend of mine for zillions of years. And I know all you girls know her and work with her. And it was a lovely show, wasn't it? It really was. Yes. It was she was just so fabulous, having been in the theatre and in our industry for, for all of her life. And sadly, we lost her um, on Sunday, um, on the, I think, May, May the 28th, we lost her. Um, but Patty was just incredible. And that, as a salute to her, we just like to say, we loved you on the Wonderbirds, Patty. We know that you're flying high and we'll all see you wherever we go next. So from the Wonderbirds to Patty Brake. Patty Brake.